In this video, we'll be taking a look at the G500 interface options. We'll look at local KVM items such as the local HMI task function, screen layout, and virtual keyboard, the MCP local configuration utility or MCP CFG, MCP settings GUI, the local MCP runtime HMI, and then under Ethernet, we'll look at the MCP local configuration utility or MCP CFG via SSH followed by the MCP settings GUI via HTTPS, remote MCP runtime HMI via HTTPS, remote MCP runtime HMI via remote desktop, and lastly, the maintenance serial port MCP local configuration utility. Once the G500 unit is powered up, several interface options are available for connecting to the device. This includes one, local KVM, where a keyboard, mouse, and monitor can be connected directly to the unit how to connect the display port to a monitor with a display cable, how to connect a keyboard and mouse to any of the USB type A ports. G500 supports up to two monitors. For support access, we'll look at the MCP local configuration utility, uh, MCP CFG slash MCP settings GUI slash local runtime HMI. Two, Ethernet interfaces that include a front maintenance Ethernet port and rear SFP Ethernet ports. For the front maintenance Ethernet port, 100 slash 1000 base T, maintenance Ethernet port accessible via the front of the unit. Default IP address 192.168.168.81. For rear SFP Ethernet ports, you'll find support for multiple 100 base and 1000 base SFP options. You must be in the internal zone to access the G500. For support access, MCP local configuration utility, uh, MCP CFG, MCP settings GUI, slash remote runtime HMI, and MCP runtime HMI via remote desktop. The maintenance serial port where the user can connect to the device via a USB serial cable. Uh, Net is a USB 2.0 type B serial console port on the front of the chassis. Default settings, uh, 115, 200 baud rate. First time users will have to install the required USB serial drivers. Uh, more details can be found in slide 14. And lastly, we'll cover support access via the MCP local configuration utility. The local HMI provides access to the G500 through a local substation computer setup via KVM or keyboard, video, and mouse. The taskbar shown on local HMI on the bottom of the screen provides the following functions. One, access to start applications. Two, minimize all windows and show desktop. Three, switch between active windows and workspaces. Four, launch a terminal session to the MCP shell. Five, launch the MCP system settings GUI. Uh, note, you should only have one instance across all workspaces. Six, launch MCP emergency access. And again, you should have only one instance across all workspaces. Seven, launch local runtime HMI, which supports only one instance across all workspaces. Eight, network interface zero statistics. Nine, memory statistics. 10, CPU statistics. And lastly, 11, local clock time. Additional information will be shown when hovering the mouse over the statistics and the time clock. The color scheme can be changed using start, settings, themes. The local HMI and all applications running can be restarted using the start logout. Screen layout and resolutions may be configured using the screen layout utility. This utility can be launched from the local HMI start menu using the selection start system screen layout. The minimum resolution supported in the local HMI is 1280 by 1024, and the recommended resolution is FHD 1920 by 1024 or higher. Multiple monitors can be connected to the G500 via display ports. When a single uh, monitor is connected, the connected monitor becomes the primary. When two monitors are connected to the G500, by default, the monitor connected to the display port labeled as DP1 becomes primary, and the monitor connected to display port labeled DP2 becomes extended monitor. Uh, one monitor A connected to DP1, shown as display port 1, on the screen layout. Two, monitor B connected to DP. Uh, two, shown as DisplayPort 0 on the screen layout. 
The user can reconfigure the layout without changing the backend connections by dragging and dropping the monitors and placing them at the required position on screen, on the screen layout canvas, and then clicking the apply button and close the utility. The configured layout will always be persisted once the screen layout utility is closed. And whenever the HMI is relaunched, it will open as per the last configured layout. A virtual keyboard may be displayed on the screen using start, system, onboard. Clicking on the top right X will close the virtual keyboard. The MCP Gateway local configuration utility is used to configure system level settings on the G500. The interface is the shell based equivalent of the MCP settings GUI. Only one instance is allowed to run at any given time across both MCP CFG and MCP settings GUI. Once the G500 device is powered up and has a valid license installed, click on the G500 name via the taskbar, then click Terminal. A default terminal application will be open showing the login screen. It's a shell-based command line interface and the user can log in using administrator credentials and then type sudo mcpcfg and then the user password when prompted. A gateway settings menu will be shown and then you can proceed with the settings. Please see the G500 settings module for more details on system level settings. The MCP settings GUI is used to configure system level settings on the G500. This interface is the web-based equivalent of the MCP local configuration utility or MCP CFG. The functionality is identical when the system is configured via the MCP settings GUI or the MCP local configuration utility. The only difference is that the MCP settings GUI is a web-based interface. Again, only one instance is allowed to run at any given time across both MCP CFG and MCP settings GUI. Once the G500 device is powered up and has a valid license installed, click on the G500 name via the taskbar, then click System Settings. A default web browser will be open showing the MCP settings login screen. Log in using administrator credentials, and then you can proceed with the settings. Please see the G500 settings module for more details on system level settings. The local runtime HMI will be started automatically once the G500 is powered up and has a valid license installed. Alternatively, the local runtime HMI can be launched by clicking on the G500 name via the taskbar, then click application uh, G500 HMI. The local runtime HMI access is protected by a login screen that requires a username and password. The user login level slash role determines which local runtime HMI features and functions the user can have access to support. If configured with the auto login, then the local runtime HMI will be launched automatically with the G500 homepage and the configured user privileges. The local runtime HMI provides the same functions for the local display and control as a remote runtime HMI with a few exceptions. Multiple users can use the MCP runtime HMI simultaneously using any of the local slash remote slash remote desktops concurrently. The number of concurrent users is configurable under system wide uh, access manager max simultaneous observer slash operators slash supervisors in the DSAS MCP Studio configuration tool. You can configure the settings of the monitor connected to the display port of G500 and enable or disable the feature of the standby HMI redirect to active through the local HMI menu of the MCP CG utility or the MCP settings GUI. If the standby HMI redirects to the active G500 when redundancy is enabled, both the local HMI monitors connected to each G500 unit points to the active MCP only. The local HMI power bar on each G500 indicates whether the local HMI is showing information for this G500 or the peer G500. The MCP Gateway local configuration utility can be launched remotely via SSH. The PC and the G500 shall be in the same subnet to establish network connection. Launch a terminal application such as Secure Terminal Emulator from the DS Agile folder in the Start menu. Start a terminal session with SSH as the protocol type with port number 22. Log in using administrator credentials and then type sudo mcpcfg and the user password when prompted. A gateway settings menu will be shown and then you can proceed with the settings. Again, please see the G500 settings module for more details on the system level settings. The MCP settings GUI can be launched remotely via HTTPS. The PC and the G500 shall be in the same subnet to establish network connection. Use a supported web browser uh, like Internet Explorer, Microsoft Edge, uh, Mozilla Firefox, or Google Chrome. 
disable proxy, and enter the G500's IP address with port number 8081 into the address bar. The user is required to confirm the security certificate exception. The MCP settings login screen is then displayed. Log in using administrator credentials, and then you can proceed with the settings. Only one instance is allowed to run at any given time between the MCP CFG and the MCP settings GUI. Please see the G500 settings module for more details on system level settings. The remote runtime HMI provides access to the G500 from a remote computer setup. It requires a Windows 64-bit OS and the installation of the setup file. This is available via the GE Grid Solutions website and consists of a single installation uh, file named setup mcp hmi underscore uh, x64 underscore vabc dot exe and ABC represents the version. This must match the MCP firmware version on the first two digits. The remote MCP runtime HMI runs a standalone application. Once launched, the login mode is always secure HTTPS and the default port number is 443. The PC and the G500 shall be in the same subnet to establish network connection. The user login level slash role determines which MCP HMI features and functions the user can have access to support. By customizing the MCP runtime HMI shortcut, the user can predefine the login user, IP address, or remote port. When the remote HMI auto login is enabled, the configured user screen is launched automatically with the configure user and privilege level. After successful login, the MCP Runtime HMI shows either G100 or G500 automatically by detecting the connected device type. Please see the G500 G100 Runtime HMI module for the auto login and the HMI functionalities and features. Starting with the MCP V3.00, it's possible to connect to a separate instance of the local HMI using remote desktop, herein named RD, from a Windows PC, minimum Windows 10. Remote desktop access should be used only for temporary activities performed from Windows computers when the remote runtime HMI is not available and should not be a permanent replacement for the remote runtime HMI. RD sessions use the Windows Remote Desktop Connection application. Except for the screen, mouse, and keyboard, there are no additional resources shared over the Windows Remote Desktop. RD access requires a Remote Desktop MCP license and a separate RD HMI application. The RDHMI application can be obtained as a signed Docker container file from GE repositories or using the DSAS updates workflow and has the name MCPRDHMI, followed by the compatible firmware version, uh, for example, MCPRDHMI-300.2515-0.0. The MCPRD HMI application is installed in a G500 device using a PETC-based workflow. The MCPRD functionality is provided by a separate Docker container, which eliminates all possible interactions and crosstalk actions between the KVM local HMI and RD sessions. While inside an active RD session, menus, layout, taskbar, runtime HMI, auto login, user actions, and results are the same as the user would see in front of the G500 device's KVM local HMI, with some exceptions. Please keep in mind the RD session with HMI application runs in the target device, not in the Windows PC like the remote runtime HMI. Therefore, the user experience relative to performance depends on the target device resources and loading. Please see the G500 G100 runtime HMI via remote desktop module for the detailed setup procedures. The MCP gateway local configuration utility can be launched locally via the front USB console port. Connect the USB 2 type B cable to your computer USB port and to the G500 front maintenance serial port. First time users will have to install a required Windows USB serial driver uh, CDM21228 underscore setup dot exe. You can download the G500 resource ISO image from the GE Grid Solutions website and find the driver under the software folder when opening the ISO image. Launch a terminal application such as Secure Terminal Emulator from the DS Agile Studio folder in the Start menu. Then select File, Connect, and ensure the protocol is set to serial port. Select the simulated G500 user serial port with the baud rate uh, 115200 and then Connect. 
Log in with administrator credentials at the G500 command shell prompt. Once logged in, type sudo mcp cfg and the user password when prompted, and then proceed with the settings. Please see the G500 settings module for more details on system level settings. Lastly, I want to thank you for watching this training content video. And if you're looking for more great content, take a minute and check out the resources hub on the GE website. You can do that by typing resources.gegridsolutions.com into your browser or just click the link in the description of this video and it'll take you right there. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.